Welcome to The Joy of Music. Featuring as hostess, Diane Bick, the first lady of the organ. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Diane Bish. Welcome to the Joy of Music. Today on the program, you're going to be hearing music for trumpet and organ. And my very special guest is the trumpet virtuoso, Stacy Blair. Stacy is an amazing person because he has a full-time concert career. He has won many national and international trumpet competitions. And on top of it all, he is blind and has learned all of his music by listening to recordings. He is a committed Christian and an incredible musician. And I know you're going to want to hear him play and hear about his faith in Christ. We're going to open the program with a very famous piece for the trumpet. It is by the English composer Jeremiah Clark, The Trumpet Voluntary. My very special guest today on The Joy of Music is Stacy Blair. Stacy is an amazing person and an amazing musician. 
He has won over 40 state and national competitions on the trumpet. And in 1979, he was the winner of the Maurice Andre Trumpet Competition in Paris, France, which is probably the largest and most prestigious of all competitions for the trumpet. Stacy, I really want to welcome you today on the Joy of Music. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I think one of the most amazing things, other than your winning all of these competitions, is the fact that you have been blind and have had to learn all this music by listening to recordings. Is that, is that how you always have learned music? Yes, ever since the beginning, uh, I started playing the trumpet. I've been learning from, from recordings and tapes, and uh, my teachers have really helped about taping uh, music that has not been recorded on record before, such as etudes and method books and so forth. So I'm used to that now, so I learn fairly fast. And in many ways, it depends on how many pieces I have to have worked up for a certain concert or a certain recital, but I always try to keep in shape. How did you start playing the trumpet? Did you, did you just love it as an instrument when you were young? I'd always listened to many different instruments, and I, um, older, my older brother, Ed, played the trumpet for a couple of years and then gave it to me at the age of 14. That's when I started, and my brother went on to other things, and I just had a, a natural ability with that, and with the Lord's help, uh, it just continued to grow and mature, uh, and I've just enjoyed it ever since then. And I understand you played in your high school band. Yes. I played in our junior high and high school band and uh, uh, we were on the, uh, we did marches for halftime shows. As long as I put me between two people, I didn't get lost, so. <laughs> but how would you learn the music in a band? Because you would have to hear it first, wouldn't you? Right, we would work on our music, um, oh, for several weeks. And when you have four or five trumpets on first part, four or five on second part, you know, I heard the other players play it, play mm -hmm. the parts. Mm -hmm. Now, you have won many awards on the trumpet. Ever since you started taking, I suppose, but probably the most important is the Maurice Andre trumpet competition. Yes, that was held in Paris in 1979, and uh, it is it was pretty prestigious. But I was lucky that lucky that they liked my style, you know. Uh -huh. So uh, competitions can be that way. But it was very fortunate and a very good learning experience for me. You also lived in Paris, didn't you, for a year and studied? Right, I studied with Maurice Andre on uh -huh. a Fulbright scholarship. And that was after the competition. Uh huh. 1980. Stacy, on the program today, you're going to be using several different kind of instruments, and I'd like for you to explain exactly what each one of them means in terms of music. All right, this piccolo trumpet here is an octave above or an octave higher than the regular trumpet. It is used for Baroque music entirely because of the different sound and the different uh, context that it has. Um, now, that is the trumpet you used in just playing the trumpet voluntary, is it not? Right. Uh -huh. And I also use this on the Telemann and a few other pieces that we uh, have done. But uh, I have all the, also the other two trumpets down here. This here is a Czechoslovakian pocket cornet. And um, I use this a, a very... A pocket cornet? Pocket cornet. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, it's just the term or the name that they've uh, given the cornet because all of the tubing is wrapped around in here. And uh, it uh, actually has the same amount of tubing as a regular B-flat trumpet, that's the longer trumpet that you see. But uh, uh, it's, it's a very mellow sound, and I use that on hymn arrangements and some of the lighter things that I do. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very mellow sounding instrument. And then the E-flat trumpet I have down here, that uh, is used on the Haydn concerto and uh, several different other concertos that I play. It's just a different keyed trumpet. Actually, it was uh, fashioned after the E-flat the e keyed bugle of around 1775 or 76, so it was um, it was that uh, style and that sound for the uh, the period. Is there a special technique for playing each one of these instruments? It's a different refined column of air. For instance, since the piccolo trumpet is so high, actually it's not it's it's a, it's a harder instrument because the lip is doing the vibration on the mouthpiece, mm -hmm. and so it's actually not easier to play higher notes. It's just a different sound that we get. Now you're going to be playing this trumpet in the next piece we're going to be hearing, the Telemann Concerto. And you've also recorded this, I believe, with Arato Records? Yes, that was with the Jean-Francois Palliard Orchestra back in 1980. Let's listen now to Stacy Blair in the second and last movements of the Telemann Concerto in D major. <laughs> Thank you. 
Stacy, I know, of course, that music is very important in your life, and we've talked about all your successes and competitions and so forth. But I know also that your faith is extremely important in everything you do. When were you able to find this vital faith that you have? Well, I was saved at the age of 11 years old in Tucson, Arizona. And ever since then, I felt the Lord has played a very important part in my musical career and my musical maturity. And I'm just fortunate to be able to have an occupation that I enjoy doing for the glory of God. It's just a, a wonderful pleasure to praise the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. And I know that He has opened many doors for me to use this uh, music for His glory. I want to thank you, Stacy, for being on The Joy of Music today and sharing the incredible gift that God has given you in music and also your faith. Well, I appreciate it. Again, it's been a wonderful pleasure, and I've just enjoyed working with you, Diane. Well, I think you're going to be playing for us now two of your favorite numbers that you like to play. Yes, the Lord's Prayer and When We Walk with the Lord are just two favorite hymn arrangements of mine. Those are two of my favorite numbers, too, and I'm, I'm sure the viewers will really appreciate hearing a, a great old hymn like Trust and Obey, and also the Lord's Prayer is something that people know and love around the world.
You're listening today on the Joy of Music to Stacy Blair, trumpeter. And he's going to play now the first movement of one of the most famous pieces ever written for trumpet, the Joseph Haydn Concerto in E flat. This is the first movement of this great concerto.
The Psalms tell us to praise the Lord, praise Him with stringed instruments and organs, praise Him with a trumpet. And today on The Joy of Music, we have been praising the Lord with music of trumpet and organ. My very special guest has been Stacy Blair, one of the greatest trumpet virtuosos in the world today. Thank you so much for joining us on the program, and we look forward to seeing you again next week.